Hi there, welcome to my channel. I'm Christy. I am in Northern Alberta, Canada, growing zone 2B. I have a small scale flower farm and a hobby farm or homestead where I grow and preserve my own food for the year. Today is a busy day and I thought I would do a harvest and cook video with you, cook some dinner with me. And uh, today was actually the first day of school. It was my son, he went to grade nine today and it was a really exciting day for him. And so it's after school now and I thought let's go harvest some things and gather some things for dinner. So in here, this is my farm office. It is a disaster, but I actually harvested some of my onions. Um, I wanted to get some of them harvested and started to cure, so I had enough shelf space. My onions this year, I started from bulbs, and they're not really that great, but they will do the trick. I can't help but gawk. <laughs> I love summertime when the, har the garden is in full abundance. It is a little bit bare right now because I am flower farming and harvesting very intensely. Um, there's a lot of sunflowers for the pollinators and then I'm using the seeds for chicken seed, but um, or chicken feed, sorry. But the, the corn looks beautiful. The animals are happy, they're out grazing. It was a really nice evening having a nice peaceful evening out on the farm is always a good reset after a really busy day. The corn, this is the My Fair Lady corn and it was it's it's a really fast producing corn. I really like this stuff. It's growing really really well for us in our cold, cool climate as long as you start them from seed um inside and then plant them out like within 2 weeks. The corn itself is really, really nice and sweet. I actually prefer it over the bodacious corn, which is um, the next row over. I didn't really show it in this video, but if you've been following along, I've been kind of keeping tabs on the corn. And so far, the corn has done the best as the My Fair Lady one, and I got that from Vessie's Seeds. Oh, look, I found a borage. Borage is really good for planting near brassicas. Um, and I also found a pea. This is like my second planting of peas. And I was hoping to get some for fall. Might actually happen. These are some double quick sunflowers. I've been really, these have been really popular with the florists and weddings this season. So I'm really enjoying those. And this is a volunteer. Look at that busy bee. Such a wonderful sight. I have a lot of um, sunflowers planted here. We went on a holiday, so <laughs> I missed a big harvest and a lot of them got too big to harvest, but that's okay. These are teddy bear sunflowers and um, they're starting to fill in, so I'm really excited to have them. And a lot of my sunflowers had such stress this year, they started to branch, even though they are a single stem, um, they started to branch. This butterfly weed, it is such a beautiful um, filler flower that's been really popular this season with my florists that I harvest for, as well as the amaranth. The amaranth is filling in beautifully. I love the, the color, perfect for the fall season. And we finally have some good stems of um, zinnia. It's really hard to grow zinnias for me because we typically have warmer days and then our nighttime temperatures cool off drastically. Um, we've had a pattern going on of 30, de uh, 30 degrees Celsius at, during the day and then, or between 25 and 30 degrees Celsius during the day and then dropping down to like 12 degrees Celsius at night. So the zinnias just don't thrive um, as much, but we're in a heat wave now, so they're starting to pick up. These, uh, are some dahlias I've been harvesting. I've harvested a few times, a few different weeks off of this one particular plant. It's starting to kick into high gear and produce more, but I do have a fungal thing going on with the tubers that's affected my potatoes because of our heat. It's just been too um, randomly hot, <laughs> too hot for what we're used to. Um, I do have a lot of snapdragons and Lots of little filler flowers. 
these are a mystery rose forget-me-not really nice flower for cutting and some verbena molly going through her little hideaway secret garden it's really noisy in the garden because the greenhouse is venting so i'll let you enjoy a little walkthrough with some music
Well, now that we have enough harvested and all the animals have been fed and watered and taken care of for the evening, I can go in now and make some dinner and feed these hungry guys that are waiting for some food. One of my favorite things in the evening is to just look out in the backyard. And this is the little one of the little kittens that I bottle fed if you've been following. This is the other one. It was too cold in the house so my buns failed. Um, I couldn't get them to rise so I had to change my plans for dinner. However, I did have lots of veggies that I harvested. I wanted to wash up the lettuce. Um, I decided I wasn't gonna use it tonight. So I wanted to wash it up and get it all nice and crisp in the fridge. So what I like to do is I like to put the washed lettuce in some paper towel and then put paper towel on the top side of it so it's kind of surrounded and the moisture can really hydrate it. It'll keep for a long time. So what I'm going to do is kind of make like a um, beef steak kind of thing. This is a mushroom that we planted earlier this spring. There's a video I have about planting the spores for these mushrooms. And this is a wine cap uh, mushroom. And the stem was really woody, so I didn't use it. I put it in the compost but I just chopped it up and I'm going to fry this up. So what I'm doing is I'm using bacon grease. I, Whenever I cook bacon in the oven, I always pour the grease into a little jar and keep that in the fridge for frying, for making stuff like this because it's a lot of really good flavor. And then it's something I don't have to buy um, is any of the fats for frying. And also mushrooms taste really good fried in bacon grease. So anyway... Um, I just I chopped up the onion that we grabbed from the um, farm office and I actually am using a new tool that I got in my P.O. box. This is a corn, um, I don't know, it's for cutting corn off the cob. I don't know the technical name for it. It worked well. I, I was fine with it. So what I'm doing is I have, this is beef that I cooked up. I'm trying to clean up my freezer and so I'm using beef that I cooked yesterday. Now yesterday, this is what I did. I took the beef that was in my freezer. These are short ribs and I absolutely despise short ribs. <laughs> I hate cooking them. Not a fan of doing it. So I browned them up, um, like gave them a good sear. And then what I did is I added some seasoning to them and I slow roasted them in my big roaster. Um, just the I need to get them out of my freezer because we are doing some hunting this year. We're doing we're going for an elk this year. So and we have also a beef coming. So I would like to make space in my freezer and get these old things out. Now this took like nine hours to slow roast for me to get to the point where they were shreddable and decent. Um, so basically what I did is I browned them and then I put them in a big roaster pan, um, like my electric roaster, and I put onion slices on every single one and I seasoned them with a little bit of paprika, some salt and pepper, and I think I put some cumin on it as well and I just let that go. Um, I deglazed the pan that I was browning them in with some beef stock that I canned from beef bones last season. This was all, these are all homegrown animals. Actually, my father-in-law grew this, grew this beef. Um, it's grass-fed beef, and these are some of the onions um, that I harvested. I just sprinkled that on top. The pan had unstuck, so I added some coconut aminos into the broth, and then I added some Worcestershire sauce as well. I really made um, sure it had a good stir so nothing was sticking and then I just simply poured that over top of the short ribs and onions and I just let it go slow and low. I think for about eight hours is what it totally was um, on like 300 or 325 and then once it was got to that point where it was nice and tender, I just turned it off. So okay, now let's go back to the future where we are today right now making dinner so let's tackle some of these peppers now these are some bell peppers that i harvested in the greenhouse with you just a few minutes ago and i'm just slicing them up i'm going for like a philly cheesesteak really so easy quick and easy 
Um, I'm chopping these up for the corn. I actually accidentally put them in the wrong bowl. But anyway, side note, just, just to note for that, I did pick them out and put them with the corn. This is some garlic that I harvested. I had cured, cured this garlic with you in a few vlogs ago, and I'm just trying to use it up. But I added the garlic to the mushrooms and just gave that a good stir. I wanted to really make sure that it had a nice flavor. I added... Um, the peppers and the onions to the mushrooms and got that sauteing while I had some oil heating up in another pan where I'm going to be cooking the corn. And so the corn, I added some hot peppers and that's about it. I did season it a little bit with some pepper and I don't think I added anything else. I just had peppers and well, salt, like, but not on the corn while it was cooking. When I served it, I put salt on. Um, but basically it was just, this is a really simple meal. My butter was really, really hard. So I just took some buns and I put some butter on them. And then I took some granulated garlic and some parsley, dry parsley. And I sprinkled that on top and I put it in the air fryer to heat up. Um, then I was just checking. I'm just checking to see, make sure everything is doing really well. The corn started to do little pop sounds, which is what I wanted. So then I added a couple of handfuls of that beef, that the, the beef that I had shredded up from, um, the stuff that I cooked the previous day of the short ribs. I just shredded that all up and I put a couple good heaping handfuls in there. I pulled the buns out of the air fryer and smeared all that melted butter around and they toasted it beautifully. Um, and I did it again because I wanted to make sure they were nicely toasted. I did season with some garlic, and, some granulated garlic and some granulated onion, some smoked paprika, and I think I put some pepper in here as well. I didn't put any salt, I don't think. Maybe I did, I'm not sure. And just let that heat through, made sure that the meat was already cooked. I just wanted it to heat through and made sure the corn wasn't burning. And then the good part, I just topped it with some cheese and some, like this is mo mozzarella, shredded mozzarella cheese. And I put the lid on and I let it do its thing. Oh, it smelled so good, you guys. Like it was amazing. Topped it with some chives, some dried chives and then I took the garlic bread open face sandwich kind of style and I just added the mushroom and beef to the um, garlic toast now those mushrooms they will take on a texture of meat if you crisp them up so they have a really good texture depending on how you cook them so you would basically as long as they absorb the flavors you would be able to stretch any kind of meat a long way especially beef um those mushrooms are amazing in this dish chaz gave it like a 20 chaz stars out of 10 so it's really good um there was no leftovers for lunches which is okay i guess they loved it all so this is what it looked like it was so good you guys my bun fail was awful so i did make some cinnamon buns and i individually wrapped them for lunches and they worked out great and then i just free freeze packaged the um, leftover beef from those ribs so that I can have quick and easy meals so I can make it again. And that's what I did. It was just done and easy. Anyway, I hope that this was inspiring in some way. I hope you enjoyed spending some time on my homestead. Um, I hope this inspires you to grow your own food. And if nothing else, please like and subscribe if you were entertained. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Much love.